Testament a vessel for your praise and your glory. We thank you and we praise you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning we are going to be coming from the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 13. And we'll be beginning at verse 8. And we're going to read from verse 8 through verse 12. This is what we're going to try to uh, accomplish this morning. And what we're dealing with this morning is self or self-will. You know, today we have a saying, well, I won't say we have a saying, but some of the young folk got a saying today is saying, when you ask them certain things, they say, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing me. I'm doing me. Well, see, they uh, said it in today's language as simply, I'm doing me. But I'm doing me didn't just start today in the 21st century. It started years ago, years ago, hundreds and thousands of years ago, back in Samuel time and Saul. Because as we read, we want to cover some things today, and we want to see what uh, Saul and Samuel had a connection, but yet Saul had an idea of being self-identified, self-identified. So we want to begin at verse 8, and we want to read a little bit of verse 8 and try to break some things down so to show you what it comes down to when you talk about I'm doing me, uh, self, my own self-will. See, our own self-will can cause us headaches and pain, be it our own self-will, I'm doing me, attitude, can call us pain and suffering, as we'll see. Read verse 8, please. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Now, now what it's saying here is that, it said he came seven, he tarried seven days. In order to understand what he's talking about, he tarred seven days. Again, you look back at the earlier verses. See, Samuel had to go uh, uh, to a, a place which God had appointed him to go. And he had left instruction for Saul to do such and such. Now, all Saul had to do was just wait. Wait until Samuel returned. Now, one of the things about this we was reading about doing your, your self-will or doing me is that Mm -hmm. We don't want to wait on that. <laughs> See, we, we are impatient. We are impatient when it comes down to wait. The scripture said, wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength. So we have to learn to wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Saul didn't want to leave. It said that Samuel, basically when we talk about Samuel, Samuel tarried, in other words, he stayed where he was for seven days. Understand the number seven too. He stayed where he was for seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not. See, he told Saul, you stay right here, you stay right here, you stay right here, you stay right here, I got something to do, and I'll come back. But because Samuel did not come on the seventh day, Saul decided that he was going to do him. He going to do me. Now, what was some some other thing was going on at this time? Some of the men that that was with Saul began to scatter. Some of them began again to going into different places that you you'll see that uh, uh, out into different areas uh, uh, because they hadn't heard from from Saul. I mean Samuel. They didn't know what Samuel was, so they began to scatter. See, sometimes when your miracle don't come when you want to come, you get discouraged. You get afraid, and you began to run away from what God had actually called you to do. You began to run away from the very thing that's on its way to you. Because it's not coming where you want to come. Because uh, right now, I'm going to do me, because if I do me, I'm going to get what I need to get right now. Uh, Saul was in the plane. Samuel was in plain. And Samuel heard from the mouth of the Lord, and he commanded Saul to serve the people to give again. Now, this is how it all got started. Samuel heard from God. This is why they hid in the first place. Because Samuel heard from God to bring the people here and tell them to wait there for seven days on him. To wait. If God said wait, then we must wait. That's right. Who report will you believe? Will you believe the report of, of your forefathers? Will you read the report of, 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 of your, your brother, your sister, 
or will you re read the report of the Lord? And the report of the Lord is to wait here at Gilgal for seven days. Why? Because God had a design purpose for you being there. Wait on the Lord. He'll renew your strength. But as we go on to see that uh, 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 the design of God was to test was, was to test Saul who would be with the design of God was to test Saul to see if Saul would be obedient to him because Saul had been appointed. He had been anointed by God to, 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 to lead the people. So he wanted to know, can you trust me? Is you going to do what I said do? Or, or will you pass the test? How many times we have found ourselves in a, a situation where our character has been questioned, our loyalty has been questioned, our strength has been questioned. How many times we've been in those type of situation with these tests like that will define our relationship with God? It will define who we really are. But see, Saul was being tested here. Read verse 9. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. See, now see, one the question should be asked here. Will Saul subject himself unto God's will, or will Saul, uh, 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 I, it, 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 in his own, will he subject himself to God's will? He's like, no, that's the question. What will Saul do as God has called him to sit and wait? Wait these seven days. He's already getting patient because he's already getting patient. He's already getting word because some of his men, thousands of men, already ran off and left him. See, when people began to leave you, you get worried. You go, you, go, you go to thinking crazy and, and, and like, what am I going to do now? I'm by myself. What am I going to do now? So you begin to, 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 to have what they call irrational thoughts. Irrational thoughts. But I don't know if Saul was having irrational thoughts or not. But the evidence showed that he wasn't doing what God wanted him to do. And Saul said, bring here a burnt offering. A burnt offering to me. And a peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. Now, 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 now see, there are certain things that certain people are not supposed to do. See, you, you, God set things in motion. He set things in order. He had a priest. Only a priest could do the priestly duties. It's like what we got today. Uh, we got pastors, we got teachers, we got we got a uh, 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 preachers, we got evangelists, uh, we got deacons, we got uh, uh, reverends, we got elders, we got we have we have bishops, we have uh, cardinals, we 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 got uh, uh, saints, we got uh, prophets, we have all these people, doctors, we have all these people in line in a spiritual capacity now. Okay, we have all these people in a spiritual capacity, but each individual, each office has a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you cannot be jumping back and forth trying to do what I'm supposed to be doing. See, as a pastor, uh, I can only do certain things. There's certain things bishops do that I shouldn't be doing because I'm not a bishop. There's certain things doctors do that I shouldn't be doing because I'm not a doctor. So, but Saul didn't get the picture. See, Saul, you are not the prophet of God. Therefore, you cannot be offering up a sacrifice. Hmm. You cannot be offering up a sacrifice. But he did. Saul said, Saul said, bring here a burnt offering to me and a peace offering, and he offered a burnt offering. See, he did not offer it himself, but rather by the hands of the attendant priest Ahab, who was, we know, with him. In other words, Saul himself didn't do the offering, but he got a priest to do it for him. Not the prophet of God, not the man of God, but a priest to do it for him, which is all out of line. All because I'm doing me what I want to do. See, when you're doing you, what you do is you bring other people into your mess. 
You bring other people into your mess because you want to do what you want to do, and you get other people in trouble. So you get this. See, Saul is getting this boy here caught up in his stuff with God. God ain't happy because even this little boy here, the priest, he knew he was wrong. He knew he shouldn't have been doing that. But people bring you into their mess when they doing wrong. That old saying, "When I ain't got nothing, don't want you to have nothing." You know. Saul was in charge. He was in charge. So by Saul being in charge, that means Saul had to make the right decisions. In your in your trials and your your testings that you go through, and we we talked about Job a few weeks ago, and the thing that Job went through, and Job was being tested, and he had these three friends. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. And we talked about how they come to him accusing him of things that he knew wasn't true. Uh, uh, one said that he, was, he wasn't he was innocent. Uh, uh, one said that he was a, a lion. And one said he was a hypocrite. Now, Job could have easily just said, okay, well, forget what y'all say. I'm going to do me anyway. I'm, I'm going to do me, and I'm going to curse God and die, as his wife told him to do. But Job stayed focused on God. And that's what we should do. We should stay focused on God, not let anybody pull us into something that will take us away from God because we are doing what we want to do, our own self-will. See, Job stayed focused. But here we find that Saul, on the other hand, he's not. He's not. And Saul is the king. Is it, is it that thing, well, I'm the king so I can do what I want to do because I'm the king? By, by doing what Saul did, it showed that he had no confidence in what the sacrifice represented. By him simply wanting to do a sacrifice showed that he did not understand the meanings of sacrifices. He had so much more to learn. And see, this is what we're doing. We want to do, we want to do our, our own thing, do our own will, let our will be done. It's not about your, our will, it's about God's will. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father. See, our Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, but when we want to do our own will, and if our will is not lined up with God's will, we are headed for a problem. That's going to be a problem. And so again, by Saul doing this, he showed that he had no confidence in what the sacrifices truly represent, and they were to him a mere ceremony. A ceremony, that's all. It's like taking, you know, a... Uh, uh, it's it, it, it's like it's like I, I I'm gonna use this I'm gonna use this this uh this uh scenario. You out to hear the scenario. It's called it's called it's something that we all uh, most most of us are familiar with and have done it once or twice in our lives at least once in our lives anyway. If you're at a certain age in life, it's called marriage. It's called marriage. Now listen, marriage. We call it a marriage ceremony. Well, see, this sacrifice is a ceremony. Now, Saul did not understand the true meaning of this sacrifice, <clears throat> and he looked at it simply as a, 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 a just a some type of ceremony that 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 million people today represent as as it shows those because I, I love the Lord, so I'm gonna go do some of this here. But it's more than that. It's more than that. Marriage is not just a ceremony. It's not just a physical act of, 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 of appearance. It has, marriage has vows in it. And the vows that are in marriage goes along with the vows that we make to Christ. The same type of vows. The same type of vows. In fact, God said he was married to a backslider. It's the, same, it's the same vow. It's not just a mere ceremony. Saul was doing this for him. Like just some old ceremony to represent the, or how they treated Christ on the cross or stuff. That's all it is to him. But it's so much more. It is, it is not just a ceremony. Sacrifice to God. The 
It's not just a mere ceremony. In other words, it's not something that we just do just to be doing. It's like going to church. You just ain't going to church just to be going. If you tell someone I love you, you ain't telling them I love you just to say I love you. Those are just words easily be spoken. But love is a verb. Y'all know what a verb is. You went to school. Love is a verb. It's an action word. So a ceremony to God, a sacrifice to God, is not just mere having a sacrifice, a ceremony. It's action. It's, it's identifying. It's identifying with the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is also identified when you bring that offering, that sacrifice, that burnt offering, that peace offering. You're, you're, you're telling God, look, we have done this wrong, and we are trying to make things right. We are offering this peace offering because we realize that we have done something wrong, God, and we want to make this peace offering to get this thing right. But only the priest, Samuel, was the one that had to do this, not Saul. This is why you have pastors and teachers in the church. So you have to let the pastor be a pastor. You, 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 it's like you have to let, let, the, let the parents be parents, kids. You know, you have to let the husband be the husband. You have to let the wife be the wife. You can't be the wife and be the husband at the same time. The husband and the wife at the same time. Kids can't be parents because you don't know how to parent. First of all, ain't none of you got no job. You still living all in the way. So everybody have to do their part based on what it said. It cannot always be I'm doing me. It's self-will attitude. It can't always be that way. So, read on to verse 10. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. Okay. Now, it, it, came, it came to pass. Now, I want to go back a bit. Saul was moved by the expenses to offer the burnt offering himself, even though he had no authority to do so. Saul did it, but he knew he it, 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 even though he knew he did not have the authority to do an offering of such magnitude mm -hmm. that only could be only be done by the Levites. See, the Levites was God anointed people to be priests and stuff. They the one that did all of that. If you weren't a Levite, you had no business doing that. Mm -hmm. It's like I said, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not a bishop, so I should not be trying to step up into a bishop position and do that job. I need to wait until God called me and placed me in this position, then do what I need to do. It can't be about me doing me, doing me, doing me, my own self will. This is what I want to do. It can't be that. So Saul did that. He did something he knew that he did not have the authority to do, that it was only to be done by the very people that God had appointed to do, which was the Levites. Saul, because Saul, because Samuel was late getting there, he decided he wanted to go on and do it anyway. So what he did was he implicated or intruded over into the Levite priesthood, which is something that you cannot do. See, when we're doing us, doing what we want to do, doing our own self, we, we do anything we feel we're big enough to do. We don't think about the repercussion behind it. But there are repercussions behind things that we do. And it came to pass that as soon as he had, had made an end of the offering, or the burnt offering, behold, Samuel come. You see, just when you give up on life, there's your breakthrough. Just when you decide to stop, there's the finish line right there in front of you. <laughs> I can't go no further. I'm just tired. I, I, I just can't keep doing this. I'm tired. I can't go no further. Well, the finish line is right in front of you. All you got to do, the finish is to hold on just a little while longer. I think it was, I bought Molly, uh, a, a, a rag gay writer, the singer wrote one time and said, hold on, every little thing will be all right. Every little thing going to be all right. And, and, it, and it will if you hold on just a little while longer. The Bible says, I, I, I remember how God, God lifted me up of the mercury miry clay. I was holding on. Uh, 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 Isaiah, uh, 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 Israel, rather, Jacob said, I held on to the angels. I held on. I wouldn't let go. I just held on to him and held on to him. And I said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. We have to hold on to what God has given us until we find our blessings. The blessing is on his way. The blessing is on his way. Peter was locked up in jail and, 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 and the door was open. And he, he come out of jail and he was at this house knocking on the door where all the saints was in there praying and stuff. And this young lady named Rhoda came to the door and, and, and saw who was there. Peter and she thought it was a ghost. 
went back to tell the rest of them they didn't believe. Well, guess what? They were praying for a blessing for Peter, and the blessing was standing at the door, and they couldn't see it because they was doing them. They felt they were so necessary just to stay in prayer and not worry about what was going on. If you're going to pray, pray to receive an answer. Don't pray just to be praying. Pray that you know an answer is on its way. It may not get here today. It may not get here tomorrow. But I know that my answer is on the way. God is not man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Everything that God said, he will fulfill it until the day of his coming. My word that go forth out of my mouth shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish everything that I sent it to do. Everything. And I know it will because I'm God. I do not change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you saw me Monday, you're going to see the same me Tuesday. You saw me Tuesday, you'll see the same me Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And Lord have mercy on Sunday what we can do together. Because you maintain your faith. It wasn't about you, yourself, will. That's the God that we serve. Not ourselves. Read on. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul mm. said, Because I saw that the people were scattered for me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. Now Saul asked a simple question. Saul already knows what's going on because God already told him. God already showed him what's going on. He's a prophet. God already showed him. So he asked that question. Like Jesus, like, like, like Jesus. Ask you a question, or, or God? God ain't saying the question. From which come you? Ain't that he didn't know? But he said, "From which come you?" Satan said, "I come from going to and fro, up and down in earth." He asked Adam and Eve a question: "Where are you?" It ain't that he didn't know what it was. He knew they was out there in the garden hidden because they done did something wrong and they trying to hit themselves. God's like, man, whatever goes on, the secret gonna come to light. See, Saul did this offering, and, and, and Samuel, asked, Samuel asked this question, what have you done? What have you done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, that you came not within the days appointed, but he did. But he did. That day, the Philistine gathered them together. And see, it's really, he said, he said that, that Samuel didn't come in the day appointed. But the thing about it, Samuel did come in the days appointed. See, the, again, when we when, when we don't get it the way we want it, and and when we want it, we get frustrated. We get bent out of shape. We get impatient. Samuel came when he was supposed to come. But because the people on like that's that's what said, on the third day he wasn't there, people getting impatient. The fourth day he wasn't there, they were really getting impatient. The fifth day he ain't there, look, I gotta leave. I can't be sitting around with this man. He should have been here by now. But you forget that he said seven days. Seven days, mm -hmm. not two, one, two, three, but seven days. See, when God said wait, that's what he went, wait. Wait on the Lord and be of good cheer. And he will renew your strength. Wait on the Lord, I say. Wait. But they didn't want to wait. <laughs> because I want to do me. I'm doing me. I don't care what he said. But, but then Samuel said. What a, Samuel said. Samuel realized what Saul had done. What appeared to be a valid excuse for him doing it. Did not change the fact that Saul had... Disobey God. Because you thought I wasn't coming, you decide you're going to go on and do this anyway. What, 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 what if you waiting on a check to come? And the check don't, 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 they ain't got there today. Or didn't get there yesterday. So now you're in the third day waiting on the check to come. But you know your check always come at a certain day. It, it comes at a certain time, every week or every month or every year, whatever. You know that it comes. It has not failed yet. If something go wrong, you get some type of notice. You know it comes. But all of a sudden, this, this particular time, you just can't wait. You get impatient because you want to do what you want to do. It's something that you want to do, so you get impatient. You don't wait. And then you go and you do something, then your check come the very next day. 
but you done did something crazy. You, you done went and robbed a bank or something. You done went and stole some money and all that kind of stuff. You got yourself in trouble because you want to do what you want to do instead of waiting on the Lord and being a good cheer. So it said, even though what, what he thought it did would change the fact, it don't change the fact, Saul disobeyed God. For this he would lose. Listen to what, what he said here. When you disobey God. Even though Saul tried to vindicate what he had did and said, well, I thought you wouldn't come and we were waiting on you and you didn't come and, and a lot of them people was getting impatient and they and they leaving and everything and the Philistines, we know they're giants and they coming up against us, they're rather against us. None of this stuff had happened. None of it had happened. It's just in his mind because things not going where he wanted to go. It had happened. And Samuel came the day he said he was coming. But our impatience and want to do what we want to do does not allow us to wait on the Lord in good cheer. So, he found another Saul lost out. When you don't wait on a person to call you by a job because you go do something else, you, lose, you can lose out on the most important job of your life. Saul disobeyed God. He disobeyed what Samuel had told him to do and just wait here. And for that, he will lose his kingdomship. He will lose his kingship. It says, and I'm going to read this there. I want you to really understand this right here. Let me read. Saul had disobeyed God. And for this, he would lose his kingdomship. God had, and, and the thing about this for him, see, cause again, it's not like it's not like God don't know what we're going to do. It's not like you don't know what, he, what, what we're going to do. So God had already found another man, one after His own heart. It says, see, He knew what Saul was going to do, so He already got things started in motion. See, that's what we said. Well, I don't, I don't know God this man. God already know. He, God said, I knew you with, even before you were born. I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. I know what's going on. So God already has found somebody else to take your place because you're disobedient. The Bible said that to obey in Chronicles, it said to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. And 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 and, and uh, we read in even the same it talks about Saul went on and, and sacrificed this and sacrificed that. God said, Well, what is bleeding in my ear? What is this I hear going on? See, we think God don't know, but God knows all things, or God got behind. He said, To obey is better sacrifice. So God has already got another person lined up to take this kingdom ship as he taken it from Saul. This was the first of several sins that Saul's. In Saul's life, when he resulted in him losing his throne. This was just the beginning of what Saul was doing. See, in other words, now listen here. I did co correlate this right here. Mm -hmm. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin will cost you more than you want to pay after it has kept you in sin longer than you want to stay. That's what, that's what sin do. So Saul committed this first sin in, and that was only the beginning of what he was doing. That was only the beginning. Because if we continue to read, we'll see where he 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 he, he did most sacrifices. He did most stuff like that. And, and Saul, Samuel came and said, what's this bleeding out here? God told him to go and, 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 and destroy this, this certain place, the animals and everything. He went and he saved some. He didn't do what God told him to do. And, and Samuel told him then. To obey is better than sacrifice. To do what God tells us to do is better than trying to do us, our own self-will. Because our own self-will will only get us in, in, trouble. in trouble. Oh, read verse 12, please. Therefore, said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. Mm. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Now he, he was saying, you know, the, 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 the Philistines uh, came down on me upon Gilgad, and I had to make a 
quick supplication. In other words, I had to make a quick decision. I had to do something fast, he said. I had to make a decision whether to, to do this thing to God, to get God attention. Well, God already got it. He's listening. God already sees. He knows what's going on. He told Moses, you better get down to that camp because those people down there doing some stuff they shouldn't be doing. <laughs> you know, God knows what's going on. I, I, therefore, I say that the Philistine will come down now upon me to get good, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered burnt offering. That's what you do, so I said, why'd you do that? I ain't had no choice. Mm. I ain't had no choice. That's what we say. I ain't had no choice. And just tell it like it is. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm doing me. See, because what I want to do is more important than what God has designed for me to do. So I'm going to do me. And we have that attitude like that. We miss out on everything that God really does have designed for us. We miss out. So, Samuel said, I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. See, Saul had, Saul had, as men have today, a religious argument in favor of him disobedient. Now, okay, Pastor, understand. Tell me what it means. What it, mean. it means something this simple. Saul mm -hmm. just justified what he was doing. He just tried to justify what he was doing. And he tried to use the Bible, his, 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 his uh, 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 position to acknowledge. That's all. He had a, 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 he tried to justify what he was doing as we do today it, with our religious argument. Well, the Bible says this, the Bible said that, the Bible said this, the Bible said that. We say these things, but we don't want to believe them. Someone asked me one time, well, didn't the Bible say it's better to give than receive? I said, I don't know, did it? Well, ain't that what it said? I said, I don't know, did it? You tell me. You said it. Ooh. And the only reason they were saying it then, why would they say it? They were saying it then because they were trying to get something from me, trying to get something for nothing. So they want to use a religious attitude to try to get what they want. Saul so, tried to use a religious point of view to get what he wanted. Well, I know I had to make a burnt offering because the Philistine was about to come down upon me and I had to make this sacrifice to God. But God ain't told you to make no sacrifice. If that was the case, why, if they came down on just go and fight. And just say, Lord, help us. And if, and if they came down on you wrong, God will help you. But to try to do something that you know you're not supposed to do, God may help you, but he's going to punish you on the outcome of it. <laughs> and his favor, his disobedience. His eyes upon the people as recorded in verse 11 and not upon God and his commandment. See, Saul's eyes was about the people more than it was about God. See, the people, he said. And I saw that the people were scattered from me. See, my friend it done left me now. I don't know what to do now, so I got to do something. So I'm going to go to the bank, draw up my money, I'm going to pass out some money to them. I'm going to call them up, I'm going to do this, I'm going to let them drive my car, I'm going to let them stay with them, I'm going to do this here. Cause I don't want these people leaving me. Not thinking and having the, the, the knowledge of the audacity to call upon God, who you say is your, is your heavenly father. Not thinking about calling on God, who is your heavenly father, your Lord and Savior. You ain't thinking about God. All you think about my friends are more important to me than God is. Therefore, I'm going to do me. My own self-will. And my own self-will will separate me from God. Knowing me will separate me from God. Saul had a problem. He really has a problem now. Because as we read, it says this, this sin right here was only the beginning of sins that Saul committed. And each time you commit a sin, it seems to get worse and worse. It separates you more and more from God. It separates you from church. It separates you from friends. It separates you from family members. It separates you from so much. 
when you are committing sin. It's like committing a crime. You commit a crime and you on the run. You can't go back to your family member. You can't hang out with this person, that person. Because now you, it's, it's just a separation has taken place. Saul separated himself from God when he committed that sin. And therefore God said, now the kingdom that you have will be taken away from you. And then we'll continue to read later on down the road. You realize that when God took it from him, he had already looked across the way in the big old little field. Like there was a little be rugged, rugged little young man called David. And David was the one that God had already called. Saul. And called him to take Saul's place. And David was just a little rut. As we read, as we continue to go through this. And I think that what, what we need to do. And I'll admonish you that, that read, read this, this chapter. Continue to read this little about Saul and what Saul did. And how it came back on him. And the plain it says, instead of wanting to do our own thing, have our own will done, let us look unto God. Let us look to him and say, Father, I thank you that not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. Turn to Psalms chapter 139. Psalm chapter 139. In, in fact, go to, go, to, go, to, go to Psalm 27 first. Chapter 27 first. Here we go to 139. Because we want to we want to see what, what it's like and, and the benefits of trusting God. Just trusting God. Psalm 27. Are we there? And, and it says, see, when we put our eyes on God, this would happen. We can truly say, where the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? See, if, if, if Saul had kept his eyes put it on God, then he had to worry about the Philistines. He didn't have to worry about it. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, and who shall I be afraid? Read verse 2. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Trust in God. Keep your eyes on God. Understand that God is your light. God is your salvation. You don't have to fear nobody. You don't have to be afraid of anybody. He said, because when the wicked, even your enemies come upon you to eat your flesh, they're going to stumble and fall. <laughs> See, when people bring stuff up against you, don't worry about it. They'll get messed around and get tongue-tied. Messed around and their tongue fall out and everything because they come against what God has anointed. God, people, read one more. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though a host, other I don't care how many people come against me, what they come against me. My heart will not fear because the Lord God is my light and my salvation. Go on over to 39, 139. Verse 139. Amen. You don't have to fear when God is doing what he's doing. When God calls you, he calls you. Hmm. Whom God calls, he will, he will prepare. He, he will prepare them. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 139. 139. Ver read verse 1 real quick. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. God knew that Saul was going to do what he did. Therefore, he already had somebody else prepared to take that throne. He knew what he was going to do. Oh, Lord, thou have searched me and known me. He said again, he, he, I know you from the day you were conceived in your mother's womb. Jesus told the brother, I saw you when you were sitting up on the Jupiter tree. I saw you way back then when you was on that tree. No, you're coming and you're going. No, you're coming and you're going. Go, now, go on over, to, go on over to, uh, to verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whether shall I go from thy spirit? Read on. Or whither, 
shall I flee from thy presence? Or whether shall I flee from your presence? In other words, again, God sees all. He knows all. Where can I go to get away from you, God? Where, where can I go? If I make my bed in heaven, you there. If I make my bed in hell, you there. Read on, read on. Let's get this thing. Read on, verse 8. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I ascend into heaven, God, you right there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there also. See, if, if with other words, I'm going to break it down to you in layman's turn, in our little turn. If I make my bed in the heaven, other words, when I'm on top of the world, I got everything. I got houses and land. You still there. You still there with me because I don't understand that. Even though I'm up here now, I can fall. When see, Dino, I make my bed in hell. See, I don't fail now. I ain't got nothing bankrupt. I, I, I owe the IRS. I owe the banks. I owe the loan company. I owe everything. But he said, God, you're still there with me. You're still there. So when I'm up high, you're there. When I'm down low, you're there, God. No matter where it is that I go, God, you're there with me. He goes on and say, if I take wings of the morning and, and, and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there, even there your hands lead me, God. And your right hand shall hold me up. See, God. See, I, I, there's no place I can go that God don't know. So we got to continue to trust God. Be obedient to God. Let God have his way in our life. We got to do God and not do self. We got to have God's will and not our will. We got to have God's emotion and not our emotion. We got to have God's righteousness and not our righteousness. If we want to get this thing right, it can't be I'm doing me. It has to be, oh, Lord God, I want to do what you call me to do. Because your will, that must be done. <laughs> Hallelujah. No matter where I go, you are there, oh God. Read verse uh, uh, 11 for me real quick. Verse 11 and 12. We're going to bring this thing to a close. Hmm. Amen. See, Saul had to wait. He just had to wait. If I say, surely in the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light above me. Let's get reading Psalms 26. Psalms 139. See, even in darkness, God's light will cover you. In darkness, God's light is shining down upon you. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. Mm -hmm. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. The darkness and the light are both alike to God. Therefore, God can see us no matter where we are. He can see us no matter what the situation we're going through. He sees all things. <clears throat> Brother said, Lord, I'll pray for you. I'll pray that you come help me. God said, I saw you and I heard you the first day you prayed. It's, it it might have took 21 days for me to get there, but I heard you. I knew what you was going through, but I know this right here that whenever I get there, it will be right on time. <laughs> Amen. Trust in the Lord and be a good cheer. Trust in the Lord and be a good courage. He'll renew your strength. Trust in the Lord, I say, and obey. And watch what he do. Saul, all he had to do was say, Lord, I want to get out of myself and get more into you. And church, that's what we all need to do. So I admonish you today to get out of your self-will and get into God's will. Say to yourself and everything to God, it is thy will must be done. Thy will be done. Amen. Amen. God may not, and we hear this so much, God may not come when you want him to come. But you can rest the show. If you're willing to rest and be patient, God will be on time. God bless you. We love you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you. Oh God, we just thank you because you are a merciful God. We could have been dead many a time and sleeping in our grave. But you stepped in and made old death behave. You gave us eyes that we could see. Feet that we could walk. You gave us air that we could breathe. You gave us an attitude to preach your word, to teach your word, to speak your word when anyone may doubt. 
And we're so grateful. And we ask now, God, that thy will be done in our lives that we may do, not just hear, but do what you have called us to do, to be service, to glorify your name, to make your name great. Once again, Father, in the world in which we live, I've heard it said, oh God, that so many people are turning from the church. You can turn from the church all you want, but never turn away from God. Amen. And Father, I thank you and praise you right now that you continue to watch over us all. Watch over your people. Watch over our family members, Father God. Keep us all safe and sound until we get together again on another Sunday morning to magnify and to glorify your name. We thank you and we praise you. And for each and every individual who are watching this service this morning, I extend blessings, help, mercy, and joy unto you and your family in the precious name of Jesus. Hold on to God on changing hands and watch what he does for you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Until the next time. When things are going bad, what do we do? We put a praise on when it. When things are going good, what do we do? We put a praise on we it. We put a praise on it. We put a praise on it. We put a praise on it. God bless you. God bless you.